الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our God our Lord, our Creator, our Sustainer. We thank Him. We show our gratitude to, towards Him through our coming together for Jum'ah, for this prayer, and for our other prayers throughout the day. And we declare openly and clearly, with no hesitation, that there is no God worthy of worship, that there is no deity except in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we declare that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and servant and a guide for all of humanity and in our example. Today, I would like to speak with you about something central to our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's really at the heart and the core of what it means to pray. This is the, 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 the center of, of our focus in prayer. It's something that we repeat over and over and over throughout the day. And Unfortunately, we repeat it so often, sometimes we do it without having a clear understanding or vision as to what it is that we're saying. So I'd like to highlight the heart of Muslim prayer and the heart of the Qur'an, Surah Al-Fatiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful the most kind, the most merciful. In these verses, in this verse, this first verse of, the, of uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, we're reminded of two of God's attributes, two of His names. Now, as Muslims, we know that God has multiple names. He has 99 attributes, or more actually, but those are the, the common, commonly referred to attributes, the 99 attributes of God. The loving, the all-knowing, the first, the last, the powerful, the, the fashioner, the creator, the sustainer, the Lord. There are many, many attributes. And amongst all of his attributes, God has selected two of them, which are very similar to each other, to be repeated at the beginning of the surah and also somewhere near the beginning of the surah. It's not that that there is a limit, that God has a, has a limitation on what attributes He can invoke. So why is it then that He would select these two attributes to focus, for us to focus on in, in reaching out to Him in our prayer in the beginning of each of the surahs that we recite, but also in the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha? I would suggest and many scholars in the past have commented that the reason is as human beings we are oft committing mistakes, transgressions, sins and we come here for Yom al Jum'ah for the day of congregational prayer we come as individuals but we come together to remind one another uh, of the importance of trying to stay on the straight path, of doing the right thing, to improve in our character. And it's difficult. It's difficult to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to face God after having done something that is not pleasing to God, that we know in our hearts is not the right thing to do. And when we do something of that nature, it presents an obstacle, a barrier, for us then to face God after that. It's hard for us to face a friend if we've done something to betray a friend. To look at that person in the eye 
after you've done something hurtful or said something hurtful or done something that has ruptured that relationship. It's hard to face someone after you do something against your, your friend. Similarly, it's difficult for us to turn and face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after we do something that is against our own souls, that we know is not the right thing to do. It's a challenge. It's such a challenge that I would suggest that it leads many people, many of us, to neglect prayer, to neglect facing Allah. It might be easier to sort of, when you're committing an, a, a sin or doing something that's displeasing to Allah, we oftentimes justify it by putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to putting God Almighty out of our minds and out of our thoughts. Not being sensitive to the fact that God is observing us at that very moment. And that enables us to commit something that we know is not the right thing to do. And if we get accustomed to putting God out of our mind, then when it's time for prayer, we have to then remember God and stand before God, knowing that God is seeing through us he sees us and He sees through us. He looks into our hearts and into our minds and is well acquainted, as He says in the Qur'an, with all that we do. In Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. God is well acquainted, well informed with everything that we do. So it's a, it presents a challenge. But God is helping us to overcome this challenge by having us recite at the beginning of, of our prayer, in the beginning of each Surah and the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the most often recited Surah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. It's a reminder that God is forgiving, that He is merciful, that He is compassionate, and He's well aware of our mistakes. But He's reminding us to to invoke His name his names of compassion and mercy as a way to overcome that obstacle, that psychological barrier that we put for ourselves. So we begin, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. The next notion in Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdu, Alhamdu lillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdu, Alhamdu is translated oftentimes as praise or thanks. Thanks be to God. Alhamdulillahi. Praise, all, pra all praise, the praise. Alhamdu. Is due to God. Sometimes when we get a gift, we're very grateful to that person. And we should be. Gratitude is an essential part of character. And whoever is not grateful to other people is not grateful to God. So we should be grateful to other people. But we should, we should not be oblivious to the fact that Whatever that comes our way that is a blessing, even if it's through your, your family, your friends, your fortunate work, whatever the, the circumstances through which you acquire that gift, ultimately the source is God. And our gratitude should be directed towards God. Alhamdulillahi. So when we say Alhamdulillahi, we should just imagine some of the things that we should be grateful for. Because it would be impossible to re recount all of the things that, we're, that we should be grateful for. I've told before of the situation of the person who comes before God on the Day of Judgment with a mountain of good deeds. He has a mountain of good deeds. And he, and he asks, uh, God tells him, by my grace, you may enter paradise. And the person says, wait, wait, I want to go in based on how many good deeds I have. Look, I have a whole mountain of good deeds. And so God puts on the proverbial scale, He puts on the other side of it, one side He puts His good deeds, the other side He puts one blessing that He has given Him, the blessing of eyesight. And that one blessing outweighs the whole mountain of good deeds that that person has performed in his lifetime. He didn't put on the other side of the scale His bad deeds. He didn't put on the scale, other side of the scale all of the blessings that He received. He put one small thing, the blessing of eyesight. And all that he did that was good in his lifetime did not show enough gratitude to even uh, outweigh that one blessing. 
So the good news is the person saw that with his blessed eyesight and uh, said, Oh Allah, I will go to, you know, please enter, enter me into paradise by your grace. And then God granted him, through his grace, paradise. The point is that it's gratitude. One time the Prophet wasallam was, was praying so long that his ankles were swelling and his, uh, his feet were cracked and it was, you know, he was clearly on his feet for too long. He was praying in the middle of the night. And his wife Aisha pleaded with him. He says, Oh, Messenger of God, you're, you're guaranteed paradise. You're a prophet. You're, you're beloved by God. You're guaranteed paradise. Why are you exerting yourself so much? He said, Well, shouldn't I then be a grateful servant? Gratitude. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now here we have a series of other attributes that God is reminding us of. Alhamdu Lillahi. All praise is due to Allah, to God, who is also the Rabb, the Lord of all of the worlds. Now a Lord, you can be in Arabic, you say Rabbul Bayt or Rabbatul Bayt. You can be the Lord of a house, which means that that you are responsible for nurturing and caring for those in your, in your custody. That you are taking care of them, you're providing for them, you're helping them to grow and to develop. It's a very intimate relationship, the Lord and the, the subjects in his house or her house. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing himself as our Lord and Lord of all things. That it is God who is nurturing and providing for and taking care of each of us. So we are grateful for God as God and we are, remind, we are mindful of the fact that He is also our Lord. That He is helping us to grow and, to, and He is helping us to be nurtured. How? Through our circumstances, through our families, for those who have supportive families, through our community, through the physical abilities that he has given us of intellect, of uh, ability to work for those who are able to work, through guidance in the Quran, in the Quran, in the Book of God, there's a guidance. That's a nurturing for our soul. So he is our Lord. So we are grateful to God, who is our Lord and the Lord of all things, the Lord of all of the worlds. And we are reminded once again, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim the compassionate, the merciful. Again, to get past that psychological barrier. God is reminding us once again of His mercy. Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman uh, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm din the master of the day of judgment. He is the owner, the master. He is the one in charge on the day of judgment. Now, this reminds us of two things. One, that God is ultimately in charge that he is the one with authority, he has dominion, he has power at all times, but also on the day of judgment. So this is reminding us that there is a day of accountability, that there is a day we're going to be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before God Almighty, and we're going to be looked at by God with our book of deeds. We're going to be, we're going to be held to account for the decisions that we made. Now, I once saw a bumper sticker that said, how much bad can I do and still get into heaven? All right, it's the wrong approach. That's not the approach of a Muslim because what ultimately we want to look at isn't just how much good we do versus how much bad, but rather we want to look at the state of our character, the state of our character at any given moment. If we were to pass today, would... would we be worthy of God's grace? Would we be worthy of being uh, entered into paradise? It's a, po it's a point, it's, a, it's a, something that we should consider, we should reflect upon. As the prophet taught, the one who remembers death 20 times throughout the day is guaranteed paradise. It's not to think in a morbid fashion, but when you're thinking of death, you're thinking of the standing before God. And the one who is mindful of that, standing before God, is the one who will reform their character and their behavior. Uh, and the one who remembers the standing uh, before their Lord and 
curtails, limits their, their whim, truly paradise is their abode. So this is a reminder that God is in charge, that God is the, the focus of our life both here and in the hereafter, and that there will be a day of accounting. Now we get to uh, an essential statement in the Surah Al-Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ It is you alone that we worship. Because God is the focus of uh, this world and in the next, He is the creator, He is the sustainer, He is the source of, of, of all life. It is for us to direct our worship to Him directly. Not through intermediaries, but to Him directly. And this is what He wants of us. He wants for us to associate no partners with Him. It's, you know, if, if we were to receive a, a gift from someone and we go to a third person who had no part in that gift and we were to thank that third person and leave out the person who gave us the gift, it's, an, it's, it's, showing, uh, it's, it's not showing gratitude. It's to be ungrateful, truly, to the source of that gift. Allah is the source of all of our gifts, of all of the blessings that we ultimately receive. The source is God. And it behooves us to, to, to turn to God and direct our gratitude to Him. So worship is a form of gratitude. وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ And it is, it is to God that we ask for help, or from God that we ask for help. So it's an acknowledgement that God is the, is the one who is able to ultimately grant us help. Whether that help comes from, uh, from another person, or in what form it takes, is up to God, but ultimately it's, it's, up, to, it's up, for, up to us for, to ask from God and allow for God to answer our prayer. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us along the straight path. This is the one thing that we ask for in Surah Al-Fatiha. So far we didn't ask for anything. We're acknowledging. We're acknowledging God's role and we're acknowledging our role. If He is the Rabb, then we are the, the Abd. We're the servant. If he's the Lord, then we are the one who is, who is obedient. If he's the master of the Day of Judgment, then we are the subjects on the Day of Judgment. If God is the one who is the, the, uh, to whom worship is directed, then we are the worshipers. And we are the ones asking for help. We are the ones who are in need. Finally, we, after acknowledging these different aspects of God and praising God and thanking God, we're now asking for what it is that is most important for us. What is it that we're asking for over and over and over throughout the day? Over 17 times a day in prayer, we ask for this one thing when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us along the straight path. Show us the way. Some things are black and white, some things are clear, but so much of what we do in life is a matter of judgment. Which job to take? What field to study? Who to marry? How to raise your children. Some of the details is very di they're very difficult. They're challenging. And let us, and God is teaching us, to turn to Him and ask for His inspiration and His guidance and to teach us and to show us the straight path. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ Guide us along the straight path. It's a path that, whose goal is to God. We don't want to get lost on the as Dr. Maher said before, on the, on the byways and the small streets, we want to stay on the main path, clearly marked, to God this way. All right? We want to ask of God for help in staying on that path. And God elaborates on what that path is, the path of those upon whom He has bestowed His blessings. Who are they? The prophets, the righteous. You want to associate with those people who you know to be good, so that you can, you can be influenced by that. So that some of their goodness can rub off on you. So that you can be encouraged. As, as, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in Surah Al-Asr, that all of mankind is at a loss, except for those who believe and do good deeds and encourage one another to be truthful and encourage one another to be patient. So let us associate with the righteous as indicated in Surah Al-Fatiha, those are the ones whom, 
have been guided by God. Those are, are the ones upon whom is blessings from are, are blessings from God, not the path of those who are upon whom is anger, nor of those who have gone astray. So let us ask God for guidance. Let us to think of of the important meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha in each of our prayers, and let us to ask Allah for not only guidance but forgive us. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. All praise due to God, and may He bestow His honor and His blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. As individuals and as a community, we need guidance. We need guidance in so many different things. Let me highlight in the second khutbah one small important aspect of guidance that we can benefit from. This month is the month of um, African American History, African American History Awareness Month. And as Muslims, we come from all different races and backgrounds and cultures and ethnicities, language groups. And we come together and you look around the room and there's a wonderful diversity that we see here. And we should really feel, on the one hand, very proud as a Muslim community. Uh, so many have said that the most segregated hour in America is Sunday morning in church. That's when the country becomes segregated. But when we come together on Friday, we come together from all different backgrounds. And we should be very, very proud of that fact. We can lead as, a, as an example for the society in which we live that we can come together from these different traditions, these different nationalities, ethnic groups, races, etc. And as the Prophet, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Qur'an, that He has created us in various nations and tribes so that we may get to know one another. Not that we may despise one another. The best of you in the sight of God is the one who is most God conscious. So, the, so we don't know who is the most pious but we come together to try and encourage one another to be better individuals, to be better, uh, more connected to God, and to increase in our good deeds. But we don't ultimately know who is superior. But we know for certain that it's not one race over another. We can say with definitiveness that it has nothing to do with the color of our skin. It has nothing to do with the language that we speak. No one knows the, the, the true soldiers of God except for himself. Those who are truly devout except for God Almighty. It's important for us to be sensitive to the environment in which we live. To be aware that for those who are immigrating, that there are, there's a deep, deep tradition of Islam in this country. That there is... There are waves of immigrants who have come before, but there are also Muslims from the African-American community who find their roots in slavery. They were brought over as slaves, but from Muslim countries. Many of them lost that connection, but rekindled that connection. And oftentimes there's a tension. Maybe not so much in this masjid, but in the country. Oftentimes there's a tension between those who come over, maybe speaking Arabic, feeling that they have a little bit of authority when it comes to religion, and those who are indigenous, either African American or converts to the religion, who, who really in, embody the spirit of Islam, and maybe, not have, maybe don't have as much detail into the, the language or the science of the Qur'an, etc., etc., but they carry a tremendous spirit. There's a tension that, that oftentimes exists and I think what we need to do is to acknowledge that tension and we need to overcome it. And the way to overcome it, I would suggest, is by not just coming together to worship and standing close to each other, leaving no gaps, but embracing one another after the prayer. Getting to know one another from all the different backgrounds 
and not just hang out with the community that is most comfortable and familiar to you. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. It really is a problem that we have as a community that we need to overcome. For although we might be leading the nation on this issue, we're, we haven't gotten there quite yet. And I'll conclude with this one story that a friend of mine told here. A professor of mathematics, Jeffrey Lane, came and spoke to our community uh, a year or so ago. And he told the story of when he embraced Islam. He said, it was somewhere in the Midwest, he said he was invited by the local community uh, to give his talk about how he embraced Islam. And he, showed, he shared his story about what led him to Islam and, and his embracing of the faith. And there were about 500 men in the room. And after that, people, they stood and they applauded and they, everyone wanted to give him help and give him their phone number and, how, and invite him, etc., to their homes. It took him, he said... 40 minutes to get out the door after his speech because everyone was stopping him. He said that wasn't the memorable part. He said the memorable part was that he wasn't the only one invited to give his story. There was an African American who converted and also told his story. He said he was out the door in five minutes. Let's take a, take a, take a step back and look at and examine our community. Who do we say salam to and who do we pass over when we enter the masjid? Who do we embrace and who do we not embrace? Let us extend our, our, our greeting and our welcome to all of those who are in this house of worship and to those from various backgrounds. It's very important for us to overcome these issues, for us to strengthen as a community and to really be worthy of modeling this, this, revel, this divinely revealed religion, Al-Islam. Let us ask God for help and for forgiveness and say Amin. O oh Allah, give us guidance. O oh Allah, show us the straight path. O oh Allah, illuminate our hearts with, with faith. O oh Allah, let your light shine through us and illuminate our pathway. O oh Allah, let your light shine through us to illuminate the paths of those around us. O oh Allah, forgive us for our missteps and our shortcomings. O oh Allah, let us to reflect before we are held to account by you on the Day of Judgment. O oh Allah, let us look forward to that meeting with you on the Day of Judgment. O oh Allah, we ask you and you alone, for you are the one who hears all supplication. Answer our call. Answer our prayer. Answer our supplication. Bestow your mercy and blessings upon all of the Prophets, including the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And akhara da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Aqam as-salah inna salatanha an al-fahshai wal-munkar.